In this lesson, we're going to take some time to briefly look at the folder structure that we're going to see both in our Eclipse IDE for the project folders and then the folder structure that we'll need to be aware of if we want to do manual server deployment into our Apache Tomcat web container. So let's take a quick look at the project folder structure. Of course, when we open our IDE, we have our projects available. Each project then, each web application that we create will get its own folder. So these would be like the first web application or our Hello World servlet application or a city manager application or whatever web application name makes sense for the system that you're programming. Each application then gets its own folder structure as well. Underneath the application, we'll directly see the JAX WS Web Services for things like AJAX and Web Services, the Deployment Descriptor folder, which is going to essentially give us a layout and view of our deployment descriptor. But what we'll see in our code as we go and in our samples, we're going to manually modify the WebXML file itself so that we can see that deployment descriptor as we go. Additionally, we might do some things in some of the attributes on classes that we would be able to then also handle things like routing. We also have our resources folder for Java. We'll come back to that in a moment. JavaScript resources, we might put some JavaScript things in there. Build, we might put some jars or manually configure a build path there. Web content, of course, is going to be our main project directory for our views, our files, HTMLs, and things like that. We'll see that in a moment as well. So let's go back to the Java resources folder here. And underneath there, we have source and libraries. So libraries, again, would be other things that we want to include with our code. Source is going to be our code that we're going to actually program ourselves. And so underneath the source folder, we would have each package path as well as the code. If you have multiple package references such as company.projectName.servlets, you would need a folder for each one of those at this level. So you would go source, then a folder for company. In the company folder, you'd have the project name. And in the project name folder, you'd have servlets. And under the servlets project folder, there you would have the code. Now, when this lines up in the IDE, it doesn't show that because they're all listed there. But we'll see that play out more when we do the manual deployment in a moment. And underneath the web content, this is where we're going to have our main view pages, such as our HTML pages and our JSP pages. We'll also have two folders, one for the meta INF, which is going to be our manifest information, and we'll have the web INF, which is where we're going to keep our deployment descriptor. So we'll see that here, the web XML file. One other thing that's not shown here, and this will come into play in both places, as we build more advanced applications underneath the web content folder, we might get some extra folders for things like scripts and CSS. Those are going to be our cascading style sheets or the CSS, which is going to give us a way to style some of our code if we do that. And the scripts folder would be where we'd put any JavaScript helper libraries that we might include as well. So we might see those come into play. So let's look at the Apache folder structure then and see how it somewhat compares with what we've seen and what we need to do if we want to manually deploy a web application into the Apache Tomcat container. Of course, first we have to go into our Tomcat root directory and find the web apps folder. That's where all of the web applications are going to live. And underneath there, if you included docs, examples, and root manager, you should have those folders in your web apps. If you didn't, they won't be there, and that's not a big deal. We aren't going to really need them for our course, so don't worry if you don't have them. But you should have a root folder, which is where that default application lives that you see if you just browse out to the localhost. Additionally, every application that we add, we're going to put app1, app2, whatever our app names are there. So if we had city manager, we'd create a folder for city manager. If we had hello world servlet, we'd create a folder for hello world servlet, etc. And of course, I have up to app n because we have unlimited abilities to put a certain number of apps in there. Under each application folder, then, we need to at minimum have a web INF folder and the view pages that we're going to use in any of their associated code. So HTML pages, the JSP pages have to be at this top level in the application. Additionally, if you have scripts and CSS, you would have those folders here with their appropriate files in them, which we aren't showing at this point because we're not using them, but we may see that as we go into more advanced applications. And under the web INF folder, of course, we have our web XML, but that is going to be at the top level. And then we have two other folders that we need, classes and library. So the classes folder is where we're going to put our source code, the libraries, where we're going to put any library references that we need. Underneath the classes, you'd have the company folder. Then in the company folder, you'd have the project name. And then under the project name folder, you'd have servlets. And then in the servlets folder, we'd have our code. If you were matching the applications we built to this point. And the library folder would have any additional libraries that we want to reference, such as a custom library that we've programmed in a jar file or anything else that we need to include. The meta INF is just going to include the manifest file, and we aren't going to work much with the manifest file. And what we'll see is that the manifest file is generated in our IDE, and we can just move that over. 
or if we're going to do a war file deployment, which we'll do later, we'll see that the meta INF will just be generated as well from that war file deployment. So we should be good to go on that. So that's the two differences, and you can see there's just slight differences as far as the layout goes, but a lot of the stuff is the same, and it gives us the ability to kind of easily take what we've already built in Eclipse and move that over into the Apache Tomcat server. So in conclusion, we basically took a look. We saw the project folder structure, how it's managed in Eclipse, and we see where we can start working with that, as well as we looked at the Apache folder structure and see how it does allow for an easy manual deployment of applications right out to the web container.